Yeah, good morning and welcome back to in Petal lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. So, we have been discussing a few complex natural products total synthesis and today we will continue to discuss uh, the total synthesis of taxol. We already discussed total synthesis of taxol by Nikolo, Halton and Danishevsky. Today we will talk about the total synthesis of taxol reported by Paul Wender uh, which was the uh, shortest synthesis at that time. Uh, he did it in 37 steps and let us see how he, he did it. And his starting material was uh, the air oxidized product of a monoterpene called verbenone. So, verbenone was oxidized from alpha pinene and, uh, and that was the key starting material and his total synthesis actually involved two key reactions. One photochemical 1,3 alkyl shift and second one is a fragmentation reaction of, uh, of an epoxy alcohol. The first one as I said, so this is the 1,3 alkyl shift. You can see here in the left hand side where the cyclobutyl group is and after photochemical reaction where the cyclopropyl is. Okay. This is the 1,3 alkyl shift. So, this is a key step and it moves like this. Okay. So, when we talk about the total synthesis, we know how important uh, this 1,3 alkyl shift in the whole synthetic program. The second key reaction is the fragmentation of an epoxy alcohol. The, the core structure only I have written, there are substituents which I will discuss when I talk about the uh, real total synthesis. Here, if you look at the hydroxyl group, okay, this hydroxyl group upon treatment with base, it can come like this and open the epoxy. If you look at carefully, you have already a six membered ring, you have already a six membered ring. So, now this four membered ring, this four membered ring, if it opens up, then that will become eight membered ring. Okay. So, the left hand side will be six membered ring and the right hand side will be eight membered ring. So, that was the key thing is almost like you know uh, Halton's synthesis of taxol. So, the lone pair on the oxygen pushes the breaking of the middle CC bond and opens the epoxy to get this compound. Just I leave it for a minute just to check whether everything is all right. This hydroxyl group now becomes ketone okay? and the epoxide now it became alcohol. As you know in taxol you need a hydroxyl group okay? and carefully you see the whole A ring, hmm? whole A ring that is cyclohexene with a methyl group here which is attached to the double bond and then two methyl group, gem dimethyl groups and you have a hydroxyl group alpha that is what you need in taxol A ring. What is missing in this is the bridge head hydroxyl. Okay? In taxol you have a hydroxyl group at bridge head position. So, these are the two key reactions which Wenders group thought about and they wanted to use these two key reactions in the total synthesis of taxol. Okay. Let us see their retrosynthesis. The third key reaction uh, which is different from others is the aldol reaction. Okay. So, they wanted to use an intramolecular aldol reaction, intramolecular aldol reaction to construct the C ring. You can see here you generate an anion and then add to this aldehyde and that will form the six membered ring which is the C ring. Okay. So, intramolecular aldol reaction is another key reaction in their approach. And this compound, okay, so this is the one which I said after the rearrangement, okay, after the fragmentation or rearrangement, then if you alkylate here, okay, you get this compound. Okay. If when you alkylate, you get this compound. We will come to that little later. And this can be obtained from this monocyclic compound. So, here what you wanted to do is 
if you do a 1,4 addition with lithium dimethyl cuprate Gilman reagent, then that anion can intramolecularly attack the carbonyl group. Okay, that is how you generate this hydroxyl group, which is required for the fragmentation. Now, this can be obtained from verbenone. First, you, you should do the alkylation here, you should do the alkylation here, then you do the key reaction, that is the 1,3 alkyl shift. So, 1,3 alkyl shift is very important. Okay. So, the, then only you will get the 8 membered ring. Okay. Let us see how he did the total synthesis. First, he started with verbenone, which is commercially available and not very expensive. So, first job is to alkylate here. And if you look at this enone, you can generate anion only here, is not it? It is a gamma position. Okay. So, when you generate anion and now it will be in the form of dienolate, okay. it will be in the form of dienolate, it will come all the way here and then you will get dienolate. However, when you quench that with any electrophile, the electrophile will go to alpha carbon, electrophile will go to alpha carbon and followed by the migration of the beta gamma double bond to alpha beta double bond. So, when you, when you treat this with potassium tertiary butoxide, okay, as I said dienolate will be formed. Now, when you quench this with pyrenyl bromide, so this is called pyrenyl bromide, then what you get is the alpha alkylated product, here alpha pyrenylated product, okay. is it clear? Okay, alpha pyrenylated products. Next, you can cleave this double bond selectively because the internal double bond is electron deficient, whereas the side chain, the pyrenyl group double bond is electron rich. Electron rich double bond can be easily cleaved in preference to the internal electron deficient double bond. So, was analysis of this gives the corresponding aldehyde. Okay. Then comes the key reaction where when you do the photochemical treatment, the 1,3 alkyl shift takes place and when 1,3 alkyl shift takes place, the double bond also migrates to the other side. So, this is one of the key reaction. Then you have to add a nucleophile to this aldehyde. So, you have two carbonyl groups, one is ketone, other one is aldehyde. As you know, ket ketone is less reactive compared to aldehyde. Moreover, here in this particular case, it is little bit sterically crowded as well. So, you take ethyl propylate, okay. this is called ethyl propylate and when you treat with LDA, you can generate anion here. The triple bond, acetylenic hydrogen, you can generate anion. That anion can add to this aldehyde to give the corresponding alcohol that alcohol was in situ protected as TMS ether by treating with TMS chloride. Okay. Now, you have to form the 6 membered ring okay. and as I mentioned during the retrosynthesis, the formation of 6 membered ring starts with addition of lithium dimethyl cuprate. Okay. So, now methyl group will add here. Okay, then followed by intramolecular aldol type reaction. Okay. And when you use acetic acid workup, the TMS group also goes. The TMS is a labile protecting group. Okay. So, what you should get is a 6 membered ring with a double bond and an alcohol. Okay. Next, having got that, you do not need a, a alcohol here, later I will come back how you can see selectively introduce uh, hydroxyl group. So, for time being you oxidize this alcohol to ketone using desmartin periodinine reagent, you get the ketone. Okay. Next, you have to hydroxylate. If you look at taxol, this is carbon number 9 and this is carbon number 10. Okay. In carbon number 10, you have acetate. Okay. Carbon number 10, you have acetate. That means you should have a good method to introduce 
acetate or you should have good method to introduce at least hydroxyl group. Okay. So, when you generate enolate with potassium hexamethyl diacylacide, okay, then enolate will be formed here, okay. enolate will form here. Okay. Then this can be quenched with this oxaziridine, this is uh, called Davis oxaziridine. Okay. This is called Davis oxaziridine and this is derived from camphor sulfonic acid. Okay, derived from camphor sulfonic acid in three steps. Okay, now this oxazoridine can give the extra oxygen. Okay, this oxygen can be given here. So that means once you generate enolate and then add this oxazoridine, that will stereoselectively give the hydroxyl group. So you could stereoselectively introduce alpha hydroxyl at this carbon, but we will come to the stereochemistry later because we, we need beta okay, that can be done in the later stage. Okay. The idea is to introduce a hydroxyl group there first okay. that is done. So now you have alpha beta unsaturated ketone and you also have ester if you reduce with LIH both ester and carbonyl group that is the keto group will be reduced to corresponding secondary alcohol and, and then primary alcohol. When you treat with LIH, this hydroxyl group which is alpha, so that means hydride will be delivered using this handle from the same side. That means the resultant alcohol here will be beta because this hydride will come from alpha, so you will get beta alcohol and the ester also will be reduced to corresponding primary alcohol. Okay? LIH reduces the ketone as well as the ester to get this compound. Next you have to protect the primary alcohol selectivity because you have two secondary alcohols, one tertiary alcohol and a primary alcohol. As you know it is easy to protect selectively the primary alcohol in the presence of secondary and tertiary alcohol. And for that what you should do is you should use a bulky protecting group. Okay. The bulky protecting group if, uh, if you are thinking of you can use uh, TBS chloride, TBDPS chloride, trital chloride so on. So here they chose TBS chloride as the protecting group, so the primary alcohol was protected. Now you have two secondary alcohols okay, that can be protected uh, as astronite by treating with PPTS and dimethoxypropane. Okay, this is a very simple reaction at room temperature one can do. So these secondary alcohols were protected now. So that sets the stage for the key rearrangement or key fragmentation. So already we have discussed one key reaction that is a photochemical reaction where one three alkyl shift took place along with the migration of the double bond. Now for the second key reaction we have come to the key precursor. What you need to do is you need to make the epoxide, you need to make the epoxide here followed by the fragmentation. So, treatment with one equivalent of MCPBA, one could get uh, epoxide there. There are two double bonds, but still stereoselectively one can do the epoxidation at uh, carbon 12 and 13 and this is the stage where he tried the fragmentation reaction. So, for that he used a base DAPCO, non-nucleophilic base and heat it and as expected the rearrangement or fragmentation took place smoothly to give the AB ring of taxol. Okay. If you look at this, this is the AB ring of taxol and it has almost all the functionalities, okay, almost all the functionalities present in A and B ring. Okay. So now what one has to do? You have to construct the C ring followed by construction of the D ring that is oxytane, then you should attach the side chain. Before attaching the side chain, some minor functional group modifications should be done. Okay. So next, the secondary alcohol which is formed, that allylic alcohol, this, uh, that should be protected. So that was protected as tips ether by treating with tips triplate and dichloromethane. Once you have that, now you need to introduce a hydroxyl group at Bridget position. You need to introduce a hydroxyl group at Bridget position. And this is the best time. Why? Because you can, you can generate enolate here 
and not here. Okay, once you reduce the double bond, then enolate can be generated at that position. So it is better to do it at this position. Okay, so it was easy and it can be done by treating with potassium tetrabute oxide and oxygen and then resultant hydroperoxide was converted into hydroxyl group by treatment with triethyl phosphate. Okay. So very easy and the hydroxyl group at bridged position also being introduced. Now if you look at this particular intermediate as all the functional groups required for taxol in A and B rings. Okay. What is next? You should reduce the ketone to hydroxyl group. Okay. So this molecule if you look at it will be like this. Okay. This molecule it will be like this. So the hydride will come from the beta side. Okay. So when you reduce this you get alpha alcohol. In taxol also if you look at carefully the structure of taxol this hydroxyl is alpha. It is in taxol as benzoate. Okay. So now the hydroxyl should be benzoated that, that can be done little later. The next major task is to introduce the C ring. Okay. For that first you have to reduce the double bond. Okay. And when you reduce the double bond it is very important you should do it stereoselectively. And when you do hydrogenation okay, it is a tetra substituted double bond and you also have another tetra substituted double bond and A ring. You need to selectively reduce this. Okay. And when you are doing hydrogenation and hydrogenation obviously as you know is a cis addition. So both uh, this methyl group and the CH2OH after reduction will come in the same side. Now what he did, he used cleverly Crabtree's catalyst. Crabtree's catalyst is well known for directed hydrogenation if you have a polar functional group. So, if you have hydroxyl group here, see you can see the alpha hydroxyl group. So, now Crabtree's catalyst will coordinate with this alpha hydroxyl and deliver the hydrogen from the alpha side. When the hydrogen is delivered from the alpha side, then automatically this methyl and hydroxyl methyl, these two will become beta. So, this is what you get. Okay, hydrogen comes from the same side as that of secondary alcohol so that the methyl and CH2OH comes from the beta side. So this is the structure of Crabtree's catalyst uh, which is widely used for directed hydrogenation. Okay. So now you, you have methyl group, you have CH2OH but you should remember you have primary alcohol, you have secondary alcohol, you have tertiary alcohol. Okay. You need to protect some of them. So, you can protect the primary alcohol in the presence of secondary and tertiary. So, in situ and temporary protection with TMS chloride, uh, you protect the primary alcohol. Then the secondary and tertiary alcohol can be protected as cyclic carbonates. If you treat with triposgen and pyridine, you can protect that as cyclic carbonate. Okay. So, now that is protected. Now, what you need? is you need to homologate this, you need to homologate the CH2 TMS. Then only you can carry out the intramolecular aldol reaction. So for that you can straight away oxidize uh, you know CH2 TMS okay, with PCC to get the corresponding aldehyde. Okay, you, when you want to homologate the best way is you have to do Wittig reaction or enol ether Wittig. So what he did was he did enol ether Wittig reaction. So when you do enol ether Wittig reaction, you get the corresponding enol ether one carbon extra. So normally you get a mixture of cis and trans isomer, but does not matter because once you hydrolyze this, you are going to get aldehyde. So one normal HCl treatment and dilute one, it hydrolyzes the enol ether, you get the corresponding aldehyde. So what you have done is now you can see you have introduced one extra carbon. The hydrolysis of enol ether as well as the removal of acetonide took place when you treat with one normal HCl. Okay. So you got CH to CHO and the diol. Okay. Now if you look at this diol, 
this particular hydroxyl group is more exposed this particular hydroxyl group is more exposed than this so selectively one can protect this hydroxyl group with ts chloride and then you get corresponding ots okay then what you need to do is you have to oxidize the other hydroxyl group other hydroxyl group that is easily done with desmartin periodinine so you get the ketone and if you look at this particular structure you have two carbonyl groups one ketone and one aldehyde okay then as you know between aldehyde and ketone aldehyde is more reactive and you want to introduce a double bond here ch ch2 so that can be easily achieved by treating with uh, asian mustard salt okay this is asian mustard salt and that will give directly the exocyclic double bond okay now if you treat with allyl magnesium bromide with zinc okay then the allyl group adds here to get the corresponding homo allylic alcohol okay what is left now you have to protect the secondary alcohol then you have to cleave this then you have to do the aldol reaction but for doing aldol reaction these two functional groups should be exchanged ketone should come here and then OT, ots should come here okay one the double bond should be cleaved to get aldehyde and these two functional groups should be exchanged followed by intramolecular aldol reaction so before that the secondary alcohol that allylic alcohol should be protected so that was protected as bomb chloride that is benzyl oxy methyl chloride so you get uh, the protected compound now if you treat with ammonium fluoride okay say ammonium fluoride removes that ts group which is more exposed as i said it is more exposed it is on the beta side so it is easy to remove ts in the presence of tips then you treat with phenyl lithium so the phenyl lithium and the cyclic carbonates are very labile protecting group the phenyl lithium as we have already discussed it adds to this and opens and you get the corresponding benzoate okay corresponding benzoate now if you treat with acetic anhydride pyridine you protect the secondary alcohol at c9 as acetate okay but again as i said acetate should be here and ketone should be here so how do you do that so you take this uh, highly substituted guanidine okay and treat in the presence of dichloromethane so that generate it goes through enol form enolate then intramolecular acyl transfer takes place that gives the completely rearranged product okay so the ketone and acetate were exchanged and that sets the stage for the intramolecular aldol reaction okay so now what is required you need to cleave this double bond selectively in the presence of di substitute double bond okay and that can be easily done was analysis followed by treatment with uh, triethyl phosphate so one can use dimethyl sulfide or you can use uh, zinc so you get corresponding aldehyde okay so it's easy once you have ketone and aldehyde and treat with dimethyl amino pyridine it undergoes intramolecular aldol reaction to construct the c ring okay one you can see the c ring is constructed and these two chiral centers also fixed okay then the secondary alcohol was protected as trock ether okay that is quite easy to uh, prepare the protecting group then you treat with sodium iodide and aqueous hcl sodium iodide and aqueous hcl that is to remove the bomb group if you have to remove the bomb group selectively you can use this okay now you got allylic alcohol so what we have done so far we have made the a ring we have made the b ring we have made the c ring now we have to go for making the d ring so for the d ring you you have to functionalize this exocyclic double bond 
what will you do? You, you can use dihydroxylation and before that you should make sure the beta alcohol as a good leaving group but the leaving group should be in alpha position. In case if you look at the oxytane, oxytane is beta that means the leaving group here should be alpha. So, methyl chloride first it converted into methylate then the methylate was converted into corresponding bromide via SN2 reaction to get the corresponding alpha bromide. Okay. Now you have the alpha bromide next you should do the dihydroxylation. So, the dihydroxylation comes from the beta so you get the diol. So, now you have the primary alcohol and secondary alcohol. Okay. While doing this reaction there was some migration of this benzoate to this primary alcohol. So, that means the primary alcohol here intramolecularly attacked benzoate here. So, some migration took place so you got mixture of both. So, they thought it is better to do complete migration. So, it was treated with imidazole when you treated with imidazole the complete migration took place to the primary alcohol complete migration took place to the primary alcohol. Now, you can again you have to reprotect this diol. So, that was done with triposgene to get the cyclic carbonate. Okay, now, cyclic carbonate is protected. Now, what you need is to convert these functional groups into corresponding oxygen. So, potassium cyanide methanol selectively potassium cyanide methanol will selectively hydrolyze the benzoate okay, and does not stop there immediately you can take this compound and treat with Hunix base and reflex that will give the corresponding oxid. Okay. You take this compound and treat with Hunix base, okay. Hunix base when you reflex it automatically intramolecular SN2 reaction takes place to give the corresponding oxytane which is required. So, now if you look at this all are present okay. A, B, C everything is there with functional groups. You have to acetylate the tertiary hydroxyl group and you have to open this with phenyl lithium and you have to remove this protecting group as well as this protecting group and attach the side chain. So, these are the job left. So, first you acetylate the tertiary hydroxyl group. So, you get the acetate then you can treat with TASF. So, the TASF will remove the TIPS group that is a fluoride source. So, once you have that then treat with phenyl lithium okay. that phenyl lithium will add here and then opens up. So, you get back it in 3 and if you use excess there is a chance of acetate also getting hydrolyzed. So, he gets a mixture of back it in 3 and 10 D acetate back it in 3 as you know already we have discussed how back it in 3 has been converted into taxol in few steps and addition of phenyl lithium also cleaves drop ok addition of phenyl lithium also cleaves drop ok. So, once you have back it in 3 it is already converted into taxol ok so that is how he completed the total synthesis of taxol and this was the to shortest to total synthesis that time only 37 steps starting from where we know and it was now considered as one of the classical total synthesis of taxon. Okay. So, thank you.